Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, hey, hey. hey. What's good? What up? So, for everybody watching right now, which we just started, so probably nobody yet, but this is our second podcast of the Marauders. How about what do you think of that? Hey, Episode we'll deal, we'll deal we, we managed to come up with some topics, which is awesome. Well, so, I know, uh, haven't finished hey, it yet, somebody's, so <laughs> yeah, I'm hearing some feedback from somebody. It's not uh, me. <laughs> so it was, it was me it was you yeah i was trying to share the podcast on my <laughs> site and i didn't know my volume was on okay so while we're on that everybody that's watching right now be sure to like this share it uh comment with us just we're just hanging out we're talking together talking about star wars and everything that we at least know ourselves if you know something we don't know Toss it in the comments. We'll talk about it, or even just uh, just talk with us, hang out. That's all we're doing. So, first of all, let's start with introductions. So we'll just go ahead and go to the top. Start next to me, come on. What's going on? My name is Ace Kennedy, and uh, I'm ready to get this thing popping. Uh, my name's Shane, and looking forward to another great week. Down below me. Uh, my you. my internet is bad. My name is Justin Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> I am Joey Wallace. And just so you guys know, this is obviously our second time to do this. We also do a uh, an RPG <laughs> Star Wars game together off to the side. Eventually, we may get to where we show some of that. We'll see if you can. I don't know if the internet can handle that or not. <laughs> but what? I, had somebody, I did have somebody ask me when we were doing that live. They wanted to watch that. And I was like, eh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if we can edit ourselves as much as we can with the podcast. <laughs> I mean, I'll be okay. allowed to stream. Yeah. So, anyways, so yeah, that's we're all great friends. And by the way, I'm excited to actually get past all this crap that we got going on, so I can hug you guys, give you high fives, and maybe do this live in a room together for once. Yeah. Finally, that would be nice. Would be so. Yeah, so I miss you guys. So our first thing, we want to talk about a little bit about what we did last week. Just kind of hit some topics. I know we uh, we talked a little bit about Ahsoka. You guys want to talk anything about that right now? Absolutely. So uh, let's go with... Here, let me pull my notes up. Sorry about that. You're fine, bro. So we had the the live action. Do you remember who? What was her name? I don't have that with me. Her Rosario. name was uh, awesome. uh oh my gosh, you Rosario, uh, Rosario Dawson. Dawson. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. And we talked about she was on Daredevil. Uh, Amal, you want to talk? I mean, was she was in Men in Black? She was in Men in Black. She was the she was in uh, Men in Black. The either this first or second one. She was, she, you know, obviously Will Smith's girl. She just got done doing a TV series <clears throat> with Sam Etchmel. He's the same guy that did Mr. Robot, which if you haven't seen, it's phenomenal. But he did another series, and she just got done doing some of that. But you She's know, a great actor, phenomenal actor. Absolutely. A lot of people know her right now just from uh, the Daredevil, Luke Cage series, uh, even uh, Iron Fist and uh, The Defenders. So she's been in those Marvel series on Netflix. So incredible actress. Uh, very talented, very beautiful. Yeah. So, and we also talked about that uh, the the rise of Skywalker. We also and that whole like uh, leaked script. So, and Ahmad, you sent us a link to watch a pretty cool uh, YouTube link about the leaked script. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about that? Tell us about that. We can all kind of talk um, if you ever watch. Well, I know once the uh, so Robert Meyer Burnett, he's a very, very acclaimed uh, film critic. He used to be a, a a playwright, I believe. He he's very well respected within the industry, and so he got a hold of Colin Trevorrow's script. And so um, once it was leaked, of course everybody lost it because there was so much controversy in the Rise of Skywalker. Uh, to where people just wanted to know more. And so the fact that we actually got this script and to be able to see uh, all the, the view from Colin Trevorrow's point of view, a lot of people thought 
that just based upon the script that this would have probably been a more interesting story. Uh, and it would have connected a little bit better to The Last Jedi, of course, uh, with some of the things like uh, one of the things that was said in the script was that Luke haunted uh, Ray. Kylo. I mean, uh, Kylo. So that was something huge just off of that, just what Luke said at the end of The, the Last Jedi. And also Luke was there to train Ray. So it was a bunch of different things going on. They introduced Palpatine was in the script. Uh, but there was a cartoon that came out and uh, a, a fan made a, a fiction, fictional kind of comical and serious uh, interpretation of the script. And Mr. Sunday movies, uh, I think he narrated it and it was it was pretty dope. It was it was it was really fun, really fun. And just, you know, probably the only interpretation that we're going to get off of that script. They will never make that script, but it was just cool to see to kind of have a visual to it outside of those uh, still images that were available. It was the movie that we all wanted, honestly. There, there were so many scenes in that. Um, hopefully I'm not breaking up too bad. But there were so many scenes in that that I wish I would have saw. Um, the Ch Chewie and the X-Wing. I wanted I wanted Chewie and the X-Wing. Uh, we had the Vader versus Kylo Ren scene that we should have had. Uh, we had a fight on Coruscant. And then I think one of the biggest things that I really wanted to happen was the fight between uh, Kylo and Rey um, whenever he blinded her with the lightsaber. And then the whole learning how to do the transfer of the force, uh, the life force that, that he learned when he first got on that planet. But the one thing that I think that I took away from that was Ray Solana. Like she has no, she was just a... Uh, a, a nobody who just force sensitive. I think that's what should have happened. So what was your, so you watched it already, Justin, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what was your favorite part of the animated one? I'm not talking about so much the script, full script itself, but the animated yeah. that we saw. Probably, probably my favorite part was, uh, it was whenever they were on the planet. Um, and, Kylo was was he was being taught how to use that force steel um, and then went into the cave, fought Vader, came back out and then just stole the life force from I can't remember who it was. Tor Valum. Um, Tor Valum, yeah. yeah. And, and I was like, why did we have that scene? That would have been a bad. That would have been such a good scene. Just him and Vader fighting each other and, and then Kylo getting whooped. <laughs> we know who the greatest Sith is. It's Vader. <laughs> what about what about you, Shane? Did you watch it? I haven't got to see the I haven't got to see the cartoon yet, but I've. I've OK. I've read the script and I've seen, you know, some of the, some of the concept art and stuff. And to me, it's just the movie we should have had. Um, if yeah. eight had gotten a different reaction, it's the movie we would have gotten. And I think it would have been a much better ending to the, to the new trilogy. I mean, I love JJ. I'm taking no shots at the man. But that was a better movie. Um, that was a movie that was unique, not something we've seen before. Nothing recycled. They actually explain things. It's the movie we should have gotten. And it's disappointing because, you know, we lost out on Solo, or yeah, we lost out on Solo, um, and then we lost out on this because of Disney's overreactions. And and I just they got to quit overreacting because um, we should have had that movie because it would have been amazing. Yeah, my favorite we... my favorite line from that was uh, at the end when Kylo was dying, you know, in the in the in this adaptation of it, and and she was like, and he goes, "Your last name is Solana," and she goes, "Isn't it Palpatine?" He goes, "No, isn't that a little fan servicey?" <laughs> <laughs> so here's the thing uh even though it, it it you know they could only do a small portion of it i think one of the biggest parts that i really enjoyed was them actually starting out the movie on a like a uh a, a emperor the imperial cruiser or whatever you want to call it uh i thought that was because to me that explains how the resistance could have gotten a lot of uh technology when they were basically down in the dumps, like in no again, no shots at the um, the rise of Skywalker, but it's just funny to me that we had a moment where Leia reached out and nobody responded. We had yeah. the resistance book that came out. They went out looking for people and they got a few people, but then Lando comes back and within 15 minutes he pulls in a whole squad. So it's just <laughs> like, so so Lando just had everybody's cell phone number and just. <clears throat> dialed them up at the same time you know what i'm saying he just went on instagram live and just said yo where y'all at pull up <laughs> but i'm all i'm saying is is that i thought that the colin trevorrow script was well thought out and it seemed he really seemed to have studied the last <clears throat> jedi and then made his interpretations based off that 
Yeah, because yeah. she actually read the Jedi text in this one and under and, and found out that there was that secret, you know, transmitter underneath the Jedi Temple. I mean, it makes it makes all the sense of why everybody came together. You know, it's just simple well, things like that. Well, they, they explained it real well because they're saying like the the uh, the last order, the, the last order was able to mess up all communication. So that communication system was an old, like you said, an old ancient technology that wasn't affected. And so I just thought that, and they were able to use um, the people who were down and out and people that were in the, the, the bottom and use them to help come and be a part of the resistance. I just thought a lot of the decisions made with that movie made sense. Yep. I, I hope her. that somebody takes the full uh the full script and just does an animated uh fan made video, just a full length. I'll I'll and watch that in theaters. I it needs to be to anime. Yeah. It needs to be yeah. made in like an anime style. Yeah. yeah. What what about you, Joey? Did you get to watch it? Oh yeah, absolutely. So we're we're talking about the uh I, I'm specifically talking about the okay. animated part, the yeah, for sure. Yes, the cartoon of Colin <clears throat> Chavarro's script that was not made. Um, it was really good. I'll tell you what I liked the best. I, I was talking to Ahmad a little bit about this. <clears throat> Actually, what I liked the best was right after it was over, they just played all the clip art that was the actual art that they wrote or that they drew for the concepts, and they were playing music. And I, it's gonna sound stupid. I almost started crying. I was like, "That's that's what we could have got." It was like, it had this like darker feel to it. And I'm just looking at these pictures, going, "This is what we could have had." This is so that, sad. Yeah. That whole lit up, that whole lit up part where you see just like Luke's face, just really bright, and he's holding on to Kylo's <laughs> lightsaber. That was yeah. There's ridiculous. just so many more things in that. I think to get <clears throat> excited. It's just, the difference between Colin Trevorrow's and JJ's is it is it just feels like JJ's again, regardless of what really happened, which we don't know, none of us really know. We can speculate, but it feels like JJ's was rushed. Everything about it feels like it was rushed. Colin Trevorrow's feels like he sat down and he wrote this thing. He had plenty of time and he made he had he wrote the script he wanted. Is what it felt like. Well, Whether to, to JJ's, what he really got to do, wanted to do. That's a whole other subject. To JJ's yeah. credit, he was rushed. Um, you know, he was given the same timeline that Colin Trevorrow. No, he did. They did push it back. They did push it back. But at the same token, you know, I, I still, of course, we will never know what the true thing is. But I, I definitely know that um, we never thought we would see the script from Colin Trevorrow either. <laughs> we didn't. We did. <laughs> Somebody but, got in know. trouble for that. Which, well, <laughs> Robert, which Burnett, mm -hmm. check out his no podcast. Doubt. It's really good. If you like sci-fi stuff, his his podcast is amazing. Oh, real fast. Sorry in the chat. Somebody asked who BB-8 or R2 would win in a fight. It would definitely be R2. Just R2. Sorry. Not even close. Yeah. Not even close. R2. <laughs> I believe so. What, is anybody in the chat? What, what does anybody is, in the chat think uh, if they've seen it? Uh, Go ahead and comment. I think that, yeah, for sure. The biggest thing is everybody's saying that they love us, by the way. Tanner and Tyler. Yeah, all these guys are saying that. And by the way, Tanner, I got your cup that you gave me at Christmas. That's what I'm drinking out of right now. <laughs> and it's that. pretty freaking awesome. I love this thing. This Tanner, is the I, need way. I need a this cup. This is the way. I'm just going to say. <laughs> He he did give me one too. So me, me and Joe are one hundred percent. It's it's the guys on the outsides. That's that's who the special ones are right now. <laughs> Y'all are fully fully promoted. Every every single week, I'm going to have a new Star Wars cup. So it's going to happen. Kiss the ring. <laughs> well, Ke Kevin Curley start starting a fight. He said R two is the strongest droid ever. Uh, mm. That's uh, not true. He he must but not have watched uh, Mandalorian or Rogue One. <laughs> Or the attack, are or being, yeah. Here's the question: Are we being serious? Because if we're being serious, no, R2 is not. But no. if we're just playing around, yeah, sure, R2 is the strongest. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm a little jealous that we saw that one uh, uh, R2 unit with the legs in uh, Mandalorian that was doing the boat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> strong. That was that was pretty cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's uh, let's go on with this. So. What is better, and we, we've had a fight about this, and I, really two people 
<laughs> have had a fight about this in our uh, other conversations. What's better, Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels? Oh, here we go. I'm I, I'm ready for Joey's answer. <laughs> I, I, I know I know the two that are going to fight about it, so I'm going to go ahead and go with Shane. Shane, tell me what is what is your favorite first? <laughs> I don't I don't think there's much of a question in this, but it's clearly Clone Wars. Better plot, better story, uh, better characters uh, ties you back into the you know to the new trilogy. Um, it's it, it, all in all, it's a better series to me. Um, love me some Rebels, but I love the characters of Clone Wars more. Um, maybe because I tie in more with the episodes one through three. You know, that's kind of what I grew up with. Um, but I love everything about it. Um, I just, I love the depth. I love the art. Um, and I think the writing is some of the best we have in Star Wars. I like Rebels, uh, but I don't think it compares to Clone Wars. So, Joey. Is it my turn? <laughs> uh, yeah, just go for it. Let's just be honest. When we when this question was put on there, it was strictly put at me because <laughs> so, I am the lone. I am the one who likes Rebels the most. Now, let me just say this: they're two different. They're two different types of stories, and right? Very different things. They're they're two different things, and I would say what you're looking for is depending on which one you might like more. I think you. I think everybody will like both of them. Yeah. But Start if you're with. looking for something that's more. If you're looking for something that's more of a world-building universe, Clone Wars does really good at building the world way better. You see more aliens. You see more into everything, to the governments, to the way the war was done. It's a better world-building thing. True. Um, Rebels is better. It's it's a story of a group becoming a family, right? It's just fo it's focused on those people. I wrote down just real quick here, like things that both of them do good at and so like clone wars they do action really well better than better than rebels clone wars is better at action and to the point of like people actually die from lightsabers and blasters like i mean it gets pretty i mean for a for a cartoon it's pretty gruesome to an to, for a disney card i mean it's not i guess it wasn't disney when it came out but um and then also it's it's also the, the villains are way more complex in um rebels or I'm sorry, in, in Clone Wars. And what I mean by that, in Clone Wars, you got Darth, or you got Darth Maul. They actually build on that. Because if you remember in episode one, it was kind of like, it was one of the most, honestly, don't get me wrong. I think the fight scene's the best, but if you just take episode one for what it is, there's not much to Darth Maul. He's just like, who's this guy? Oh, he fights him. Oh, and then he's dead. And there's not much to him. And so they really expanded on that in Clone Wars, right? So I think they they really took it to another level with Darth Maul. Also Ventress, right? They really build in all these different things going on. It's more complex. Rebels, what's awesome about Rebels is you don't know the fate of the characters, right? Because on Clone Wars, we... We know we know what's going to happen. It's part of doing a prequel, and you just you do. So it's kind of fun to watch because you don't know what's going to happen. Also, there's a sense of adventure. It's a different type of thing. And then also, um, and when we were talking about the complexity, when you look at Rebels, you have like you have the uh, what are they the I can't remember their name the Sith Al acolytes the. The uh oh the the grand uh grand inquisitors. Yeah, yeah. Grand I mean, inquisitors. There's not yeah. much to them. They're just like they're evil. They're bad. Here they come. And oh, you uh, mean like the but, Knights of Ren? <laughs> but what Rebels does really good. I like, all I gotta say is Darth Vader, right? Yes. I mean, yes. you throw Darth Vader in, and it immediately gets way better. All now, right. let me back up a little bit here because I think here here's the big problem that I think Rebels had. Season one is pretty slow, and I think a lot of people that were huge Clone Wars fans. All of a sudden, Disney gets a hold of this, and they kind of Disney-fy it. They make it more for kids. Because I'd say Clone Wars, it's like I said, it's a little darker, a little more action. And then they take Rebels, and it's a little more for kid-friendly. And I think it, I think there's a lot of people, I'm not putting you guys in this, but I think there's a lot of people that give hate, hate on Rebels because of the fact they watched a little bit, and then they didn't want to give it any more of a turn. Because, okay. you know, you see the... Um, the Inquisitors with their spinny lightsabers. I mean, come on. Like in the beginning, you're like, that's kind of retarded, you know. But, <laughs> but all that to say is, for me, the story of the of Rebels, it focuses in on a group of people and it stays with them. Where the Clone Wars kind of jumps around a lot. You get a lot of different stuff. I think we have a lot of plots 
in Clone Wars, and I don't really feel like we finished. I don't think they're going to finish all the plots that they've really opened up in Clone Wars. Rebels is a good beginning and ending story. Yeah, there's a cliffhanger at the end, but so again, I like Rebels more, and it's because I enjoy the adventure and I enjoy a group of people becoming a family is why I like it more. Later Just- season. Later seasons of the Rebels has some of the coolest scenes. The Ahsoka Vader fight, I mean, just coming, I come on. That stuff was gorgeous. Um, but like you said, I, I don't know. Um, I'm, Clone Wars has some amazing stuff in it, some amazing stuff. And if you watch it in the order that they show, I mean, it's Star Wars. I mean, give me Star Wars. And you need it. Like I said, the world building, like world building is so important yeah. in these things. Like Star Wars or The Matrix or Aliens or there are things you, you build this world and you get invested in this world. And this is, this is, isn't this what our gripe is with the movies sometimes? Is like we all invest in these worlds and learn so much. So just so everybody understands, Shane, Ahmad, they read a lot of the books. I, yeah. I'm really into the role-playing game stuff, so I read all their role-playing books, and it's just, I, I what I like about it is learning, you know, the stats of this vessel and how powerful it is. It's just, I don't know, it's just the world building is really interesting to me, yeah. and I think to have a good story, you have to build a world and not just say, here's, and that was the problem with nine. It's just like, oh, this happened, this happened. Why did this happen? How did this happen? We don't know. Here's a book to explain everything because we didn't want to tell you. Justin, before you comment, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, Filoni is, he's super big into uh, George Lucas. They work together. um, And so that whole conversation of him telling him to bring uh, Maul back of, um, oh, just, just bring him back, you know, just, He's, but he's dead, George. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Just, just bring him back. Uh, I just, I just want to see him back. Just bring him back, please. Just... You brought up Dave Filoni. Did you see that he changed his background on Twitter? Yes, he did, and that was something I gave uh, Jared for one of the show notes. Sorry. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're gonna get there. Oh, we're no, we're not. <laughs> yeah. So real quick, real quick. Since you mentioned, real quick. Since you mentioned Maul, like. Is that the most wasted character in Star Wars? Why no. was why was no. Maul not the bad guy through one through three? Um, again, I think the the I I honestly believe that the the point of episode one, two, and three was to get Anakin to Vader. I don't think that necessarily a villain was really the thing. <laughs> I just think that because if you if you really want to look at it, the the actual antagonist and protagonist of the uh, one, two, and three is the Jedi. They're the enemy and the because if the Jedi is the one that pushed him to be Vader, so yeah. but yeah, but Justin, what do you what do you think about Rebels and uh and Clone Wars, bro? Man, I'll tell you sure. what. So as a guy growing up, um, only had the movies. I didn't have books. I didn't have the uh, comics or anything that. So it wasn't until really the last year, well, probably the start of seven, eight, nine, that I really got into the lore of all of it into the world. And so what Clone Wars. Clone Wars answers a lot of questions that I had about um, Star Wars in general, and Rebels is a fun watch. Like, I know the world. I know how it's built. I enjoy it. I know the clans I like. You know, I'm huge with Mandalorian, uh, and, and I really like that story arc of everything that has to do with Mandalore. And so Clone Wars satisfies that with me, and then also Rebels is just a fun, like, I can just watch this and I it's Star Wars and I enjoy it. And so for me, that's kind of like, I don't really have a favorite. It just depends on the mood. If I'm in a mood where I want to watch a lot more um, of a story arc, then I'll do Clone Wars. If I just want a fun watch and get River involved, my my almost three-year-old son, then um, he really likes the visual effects of, of watching Rebels. And so he'll sit and watch a whole thing with me. So that's kind of for me as, you know, coming into the whole everything that star Wars and what it's about. That's, that's kind of how I, I look at that stuff. So for me, um, I like rebels. I do, but uh, if I had to choose it, it definitely would be clone wars. And it's simply for a lot of the reasons that Joey already gave. Um, there is a lot of lore that we take even now from the clone wars. Um, we were introduced to a lot of new bounty hunters, uh, job the huts, brothers, um, we got to understand like we got to see a lot more sith and jedi 
uh, seeing who had Apprentice and things of that nature. And then it just built upon some of the movies that we already saw. So to see that they took the time to, and, and the other thing that I wanted to hit on was like, like Joey also said, was that it was, I think they were made for different people because Clone Wars was for us. Like even, I mean, there was so much death, like people was dying, like they was, people was getting choked out. People was getting shot. People was getting electrocuted. Like, uh, like you said, sabers getting, I mean, every, it was so much death, but then there's also a lot of story into it as well. But then if you, if you stick around for the later episodes of rebels, they start to pick up on some of the things that were introduced in the clone wars. Uh, like the mortis, the mortis plot was in some of the last episodes of rebels. And if you don't know what that is, I mean, that's just a part of it right there. So, yeah. um, this, they're definitely, and just like Resistance, the other series, I watched probably the first season, haven't really picked up the second season, and I, it's, 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 I'm, I'm going to watch it because I'm a Star Wars fan, but Resistance is just not for me. It's very, very kiddish to me. It's getting, it's getting yeah. better. It's getting better, but uh, it's, it's I, a lot of things, though. Yeah. We have uh, uh, Austin in the comments said, is Millennium Falcon really the fastest ship? Dude, do we have to remind you that the, the, the Millennium Falcon did the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs? <laughs> According you know, to Han Solo, it is. And he, and he wasn't referring to, he was not referring to uh, the, the, like the distance. He was referring <clears throat> to speed. So, yeah, it's fast, okay? But I thought he was also talking about the whole, uh, he's a freighter, though. It's not like, he's not faster than an X-Wing no. or... <laughs> A from, Tie Fighter, though, right? From a, <laughs> from the stats, <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably wrong. I just had to get the twelve parsecs in there. I, I wasn't going to let him get away with it. From the stats, it has one of the like. There is like there is the way that they say the hyperdrives and how fast they are. It technically is equipped with one of the fastest hyperdrives. I mean, but there's a lot of ships that are. But it's, um, but like I said, according to Han Solo, it's the fast in the galaxy. I think hey. he's got. Very good. I would listen to Han Solo. Whenever that hyperdrive is working. (laughs) (laughs) Get us out of here, Chewie. We got another one here from uh, Kevin Curley. He's asking, if all the Sith Lords were to fight in a battle royale, who would win? I know what Shane knows. Shane, tell us. You're right. Yeah, go for it, Shane. Okay. In my opinion, it's Revan. Um, It's Revan, hands down. He's the strongest Jedi and or Sith. Just in my opinion, um, but if you want to go deep lore, now this is probably more in the Legends realm, but the Sith were a race originally. And so the Emperor of the original Sith uh, literally sacrificed an entire planet. um, And when he sacrificed it, he actually took away the Force. So the planet was completely dead. It was Force neutral, and he absorbed all that power. Um, And he actually corrupted Revan's mind when he was the Jedi Master. Um, or the Jedi leader. He led the Jedi army against the Mandalorians. So technically, if we're going to get really technical uh, and we're, we're not worried about what's legend and what's canon, then it would be the Emperor of the Sith. Um, but if we're just talking like cool characters and stuff, it's Revan. Uh, he's the most balanced, um, in my opinion. And Revan is legend now. And Revan is and Revan is oh, canon. Yeah, canon. So, Sorry, he's canon. Yeah. Yeah. Canon, yeah. Um, for me, so, I would have to go Palps. Um, yeah. I, I think old Sheev can can do people in uh <laughs> but which look, one the clone or the original <laughs> let's go with the original i mean i'm just saying powerful he never dies he never <laughs> dies but then on top of that if you look at he fought both uh he fought uh, Mace uh Yoda. i mean talk, i mean talking about that uh what's my boy maul we were just talking about maul he oh, fought yeah. maul and his brother and i mean he killed maul's brother and spoiler alert he killed Maul's brother, and <laughs> I think we're way past where we're on that. <laughs> Can't he say it after now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Out on her own. I'm just saying. And then he took out like when uh when Anakin not Anakin, but when uh, like you said when all of the other Jedi came to approach him after Anakin told that he was the uh, Sith Lord, uh he killed all them Jedi until he fought Windu. I mean, obviously Windu is very strong, and then of course Yoda. But yeah, I'm I'm going with Pals. Yeah, that Mace Windu fight was. He got the he got a crappy end of the deal there. Yeah. Let's just say it's General Grievous. That's the strongest. Why is it? Tell me, 
Tell me why General Grievous in Clone Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I just want him grabbing did, stuff the whole time. I'll add it to my collection. Him, why do they make him out in Clone Wars sometimes as just like an idiot? He just does stupid things. You're just like, okay. Except I mean, for that one episode when he was the when he was haunting those two Jedi <laughs> when they went to his uh house yeah. when uh Dooku Dooku basically uh he set him up because he was like yo you keep failing all these missions you keep losing all of this equipment you got to prove yourself so he sent two Jedi to his house and uh it was like a horror scene like he he had got his arms and stuff replaced he was crawling all on the wall it was crazy <laughs> uh. Austin asked about Yoda too. If he could beat the Emperor in a lightsaber battle, yeah. well, he lost one. Like I say, we saw it in the movie. Yeah. We did. Yeah, yeah. But did he lose, or 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 did or did uh, he just he have, not have the high ground? Um, <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he, bailed. he didn't have the high ground. He bailed. I, I mean, and Shane can talk more about this too. But I mean, in the books and stuff, I mean, Yoda is like he takes on even Mace Windu, who Mace Windu is considered. Well, and Dooku, Dooku's considered the greatest, you know, lightsaber duelist. But I mean, Yoda was really good. I mean, phenomenal. So, well, I mean, it was too. You got to look at Pops was fighting Yoda at nine hundred. So I mean, or eight hundred. So hundred. That's very true. Come on, why don't you see him when he one fifty? Come on, bro. Yeah. If, we, if we see Yoda in his prime, I strongly feel like like Yoda wins. Um, but Do we you know, think. Do you think we get Yoda in his prime at uh with Knights? Is it Knights yeah. of the Old Republic? Yeah, the High if, Republic. High Republic. They, yeah, they need to fire the whole writing yeah. team. Yeah. <laughs> so, speaking of Grievous, <clears throat> every time somebody brings up Grievous, all I think about <laughs> is when <laughs> Kylo throws the, the lightsaber, <laughs> and then you see Grievous like crawl out. And he just jumps into the ocean trying to grab it. Another my favorite, one. my favorite meme of, yes. of everything lately is that. Yes. Yeah, that one got me. I don't know. Okay, if any, guys. I mean, if we're talking about lightsaber duelists and stuff. I mean, I'm telling you, Obi Wan has more experience killing anybody. I mean, he he, he fought was. everybody. What? Like literally before Episode <laughs> One, apparently there was no Sith for how many? How long? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> Obi Wan's at the front line taking everybody. This is the ball? this is the stats guy again with the RPG. That's that's wow. what you're doing though. But uh coming coming from the book side, uh Obi-Wan was trained obviously by by Quagon, but he was trained uh to where when they he would only teach him the basic moves and Obi-Wan was upset like, "Bro, why do you keep teaching me just these basic moves and all the other apprentices are like well advanced and they're doing all this special stuff and he was like listen what i want you to understand is that when you're in the heat of battle and there's a lot going on and you, you because you there hasn't been any stiff for over a thousand years back when they were doing it uh he was like if you're doing all of that i need you to focus rely on what's ingrained in you and what would be ingrained is the basics so he definitely um, can fight, and obviously he cured Ma killed Maul. Spoiler alert! And uh, <laughs> you can't, Why are you gonna you can't be spoiling everything. You can't say it and then say spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> no, it does not work like that. He killed, he killed Maul twice, just for the record. Listen, so, if y'all are watching this podcast, I'm assuming that y'all have seen the stuff. <laughs> if not, then y'all tell me in the comments, and I won't spoil any more stuff. Hey, it's spoiler still alert. It's still Darth, a good watch. Darth Vader's Luke's father. Spoiler oh, alert. Sorry. Oh, crap. So that's it. Kevin, I'm done. I'm turning it off. Kevin Curley's <laughs> question, though, I, I would have to say it depends if we're talking legend or if we're talking canon. Say oh, canon. 100 percent Say canon. If it's legends, who is it, Shane? Come on. It's Revan. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I, I'm thinking more of like I was gonna say it's Luke Skywalker. He's I mean, the oh, way Luke okay. painted out, yes. and he's just phenomenal. If, then, yes, if it's a legend, what we got in these the last trilogy is not the same Luke Skywalker. No, that's like that's like ten percent the Luke yeah. we get in the books. I would say I would say Yoda is in the new in Legends or in, in canon. Sorry, but we also don't know like to what power Luke got in canon because we don't know what happened in between 
six You're and right. seven. So we don't know how strong Luke got before he decided to go to his island and forget he, the force. He, so. he went. He was so powerful. He didn't even care. He just threw the lightsaber away. <laughs> I mean, literally, <laughs> I don't he don't didn't need lightsabers anymore. So. Yeah, he, it, you don't need anything in Star Wars anymore. You just throw it away. You don't need it anymore. Just take things, just all these lightsabers and just throw it away. Guys, the some colors can throw it away Baby Yoda. It's going to happen. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's move on. Uh, Austin, we'll get to your question here in just a second, bud. Uh, the new Clone Wars episode, since we, we've been talking about Clone Wars. So the start of the final season is where we're at for anybody that doesn't know. And if you haven't watched, I mean, you're probably like, are we five episodes in now? Probably seven. 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 So, oh, wow. so hopefully you're watching those. And if you're not, they're they're pretty good. I mean, there yeah. there's some pretty. I think the last two have been the worst for me. I wanted to, I wanted to see a lot of Ahsoka, but I didn't like. I thought it was pretty low on my. I wanted head. to see some story building Ahsoka, <clears throat> not just some filler Ahsoka. I, I like the looks for them too. <laughs> I, I I I walked away from the the Ahsoka episodes going. I kind of expect a little more. If it seemed kind of like slow, super super slow for me. But it's, let's it's talk about. To, I'll go first, and I, it's hard to say because we haven't seen the the end. We don't know. Like it's it's building. It's building something. It's. I mean, that's literally it. It's building something. We don't know what it is. It's hard to really say yet. Yeah. There hasn't been much to add to Ahsoka's character so far. Um, but I don't, I'm just looking at it as an episode. What do I think about the episode? You know what I mean? Instead of just the characters and what they're going through right now. And so far, I mean, they, I mean, they're kind of filler episodes. I mean, they're kind of this last episode actually had something to hold on to. Um, that's going to be something bigger. So, well, I, I think real quick. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, so, but if you go with the first episodes of this season, and you had all the uh, like the Bad Batch, and seeing Rex and all those guys again, uh, that to me was way better. Honestly, I felt like that was like really cool. The progression of it was like, okay, this makes sense. It even made me think, oh, wow, this guy that was in The Mandalorian, maybe he was a part of a Bad Batch that was more like the scientist style. But when you get to the Ahsoka episodes, it felt a little like we we were so high that when we went down, it was down too far. But mm -hmm. So did, did somebody else want to go first? No, go. No, go ahead. Okay. I, I disagree. Um, I, Again, I know it's <clears throat> personal preference and opinion, but... I disagree because I feel like this. I, I, I know a lot of people will probably agree with you, but I feel like the Ahsoka episodes are essential because when we left Ahsoka, she left the Jedi Order. Uh, and she was completely down on the Jedi because of the fact that there was a crime that was committed and she was blamed for it. And the only person that believed her was Anakin. So you get to this episode to where you are in a different place. And she's learning what other people feel about the Jedi uh, from their perspective. And what I think was interesting is because of the fact that in her mind, she's now feeling like, well, this is not what the Jedi are about. So I think these, these episodes are the story building beats to help Ahsoka's character make it back to be to work with them again. It's to make her realize why she was a Jedi to begin with, what the Jedi are really about, and understanding that the perception out there. Because we have to understand here that with the the Empire, is if, if we looked at it, if this was today's world with the Empire, right? The Empire would be like the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, like our, our whole military, right? And then you have the Jedi who would be like, you know, the special forces or the, the Navy SEALs or the, you know, those type of people. And they quote unquote went rogue. So most people that live in the system, they look at the government as the leaders of the world. And so what I'm saying is to have somebody who was a special unit person to then uh, leave that organization and then find out how other people are feeling about it. I think it's vital that we get this groundwork because of what's coming next. I, I definitely agree with Joey saying. 
Well, it's funny you say that. I didn't feel like I said it real well, and I was going to say I agree with what you're saying. I, it sounded like I might have been hating on it. I do think the beginning of the series was more fun to watch, yeah. right? It was more fun. But these are episodes that we do need so that we understand why Ahsoka does what she does. It's, a, it's like any book you read. There's a chapter It's like, why do I need to know this? It's so much more rewarding. And this goes back to my Mando statement. It's more rewarding to understand why he didn't want to take off his helmet when you understand more of his backstory, which we're going to get. Okay. <laughs> Where'd he go? Where'd he go? He's got a five minute timeout. He, yeah, he, he just turned off. He's gone. <laughs> just saying. Just saying. Okay. So yes, I agree with the mod. I agree with the mod too. I think it's important because I've read the Ahsoka book. I'm going back to the books. Um, I've read the Ahsoka book and the Ahsoka book is a really good read and it leads more into where you see Ahsoka in the, uh, in the rebel series. Um, and there's kind of a disconnect from where she ends in clone wars before the new episodes to where she's at in rebels. Um, and I think this sets up exactly like, and this leads into the Ahsoka book and it shows why she did what she did. And I, I wasn't a huge fan of the first Ahsoka episode, but since the last two episodes, it's made me like it more and they're, they're building on it. And I think they're building to something important, but it's like, it's like they said, it's showing us why Ahsoka ends up where she does in rebels. So I think it's going to wind up being extremely important. Um, and so I, it's grown on me more as I've watched more more episodes. They haven't been like the most action packed, but I think they're some of the most important because Ahsoka is still going to be a huge character in the future, especially if they introduce her in the Mandalorian. So I think we have to get backstory now because with the new with the new thing, they're trying to make sure everything ties in, which I think is vitally important after watching the the movie. But we don't need to go there. Um, so I think it's extremely important that we see what drove her to leave Coruscant and then the changes or the steps that she took to become what she did um, when we see her later. So yeah. I, I'm well, glad where they're building it to. Just one thing before Justin comments, uh, just something that you said, a lot of people, they don't read the books like that. So mm -hmm. here it is. A, there is an incredible story, but because most people aren't going to read that book, uh, you need it on screen somewhere before, especially with everything that's that's you know been talked about as far as a, a Ahsoka series, uh, a live action spinoff, maybe a cartoon series. Who knows? But you needed that on screen time for people to understand her getting back into being a Jedi. Yeah, I, I have nothing to add. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, so here, here you can. Uh answer this question then this is from, <laughs> from austin was obi-wan really a jedi he always seemed like a double agent or like or like he wasn't really in it with the force but instead for himself i i i disagree <laughs> i feel like obi-wan was like the he was the textbook jedi everything was to a t like he was the guy you wanted if you were going to start a religion like a jedi religion mm -hmm. You want all of Obi Wan. You want him and and every person. Like I, this is going to be really weird. He he was the Jesus of the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. That was true. You get true. two points for that one. <laughs> yeah, I give you that. Totally. But so. just to, to piggyback off of Justin, though, um, he's absolutely right. Now, the person who trained him, on the other hand, it's 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 Qui Gon Jinn. I mean, and again, for those who who didn't read the book. You learn a lot more about him, but you can see it in episode one. You know, Quagon was a was a, a very much a great Jedi, but without Quagon, we wouldn't have the the Force Ghost, uh, and so it's that whole thing. But like you're saying, the only flaw that Obi Wan had is Obi Wan <laughs> had uh, a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> we don't talk about it though. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> You gotta watch Clone Wars. Know what I'm talking about? <laughs> okay, so let's. So we we know he had that, and I know that you had a thing. Well, let's answer Austin's. Oh, we already answered that, didn't we? He said, and that's why it felt like a cover. He said it was too perfect for me. That's why he thought he was a double agent. It was a soul. No, but anyway, I used to be pure man. No, Obi Wan was what the Jedi always always strived to be, even yeah. when he was young, and that's why he clashed so much with Qui Gon as he was as he was being trained. Like he was the textbook Jedi, 
if they said don't do this, he didn't do it. If they said meditate for 20 minutes, he meditated for 20 minutes. I mean, that he was the textbook Jedi. And I think it's really interesting, you know, because his first big step was when, you know, when the first time he disobeyed was when he told Yoda, I will train the boy when he when he took Anakin. And you know, that was controversial because that was not Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan was a by the book guy. And so when he promised Qui-Gon that he was going to train Anakin, like that was his first big, you know, like break, uh, I guess you could say, where he disobeyed. Uh, and, you know, and they ended up letting him training him. And we're, we, we see where that leads. But I mean, we see a little bit, we see hints of like, you know, him, you know, him breaking the rules or bending the rules for Anakin. Um, but he was what the Jedi were meant to be. I mean, when he went to Tatooine, he, he lived yeah. out there and he, he did what the Jedi trained him to do. He meditated and he, and he learned. Um, and, you know, at the end when he fights Vader, I mean, we see no other Jedi um, that I can recall. I could be wrong. We see no other Jedi, you know, turn their lightsaber off and just like, I'm going to the force now. Like, I don't need to fight you. I've already won. Like, like he was what the Jedi were always meant to be. Well, that's true. I even think so. He was even further along in his Jedi training in thinking that I think that underlying uh, Obi-Wan knew that Anakin was more towards the darker side of the force or could easily be swayed. And I think that's like he was like, I, maybe I can make that not happen. Maybe I can train him, not allow that to happen. And then, you know, we saw what happened. But even then he goes and uh, you know, it kind of exiles himself as he watches Luke uh, be raised by his aunt and uncle. And I think that that's just one of those things that he, he felt so bad about maybe not following the code all the way. Uh, this is just totally speculation and totally my opinion, but I feel like he, he was like so hurt by what he did to the Jedi order that that's kind of why he took that upon himself as well. Well, I mean, he was, that is what Yoda told him to do. I mean, the reason he was on Tatooine was because of Yoda. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I see, I see what you mean. And I think they all had to have known. They all had, I mean, they, they, they felt that when he killed all the, the, the sand people, I mean, they felt the disturbance in the force. They always knew it was under there. Um, and let's be honest. I mean, if he just listens to Mace and doesn't go, I mean, Mace kills Palpatine and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, but Mace, that but it was Mace's fault anyway because I mean the whole thing. Mace was openly he openly said he didn't trust him. Yeah. So the fact that you know the thing is is that you know he even said like look if 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 what you're telling me is true then you have gained my trust. So you know that's why I said the Jedi were the antagonists and the protagonists of uh, Episode One, Two, and Three. So it was their fault that they create. And it, I mean Yoda even said it in uh in the new series. Yoda said it. That's why he was like, nah, burn up the books. Like, you wouldn't finna read them books? No way. Yeah. We gotta be careful about saying what Obi-Wan is, because we have a series that's gonna be coming out. <laughs> and Disney is really good at turning these people into something we didn't think they were. That's so true. Don't so let's be careful. He might be a double agent. Austin might be right. <laughs> Austin may be a writer. <laughs> we don't, I mean, they're hiring everybody now. It doesn't matter. You don't. Hey, you know? Obi Wan's a double agent, and Jar Jar is the Sith Lord. <laughs> That's it. If that happens, Apple needs to buy Disney. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sell Disney to someone that that is right, not completed. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we had in some of the, the new episodes from Clone Wars, Obi-Wan, did, did he know that uh, Anakin Dude, and Padme, I mean, he had to have known just as much as he did he, when he knew about himself. And if spoiler, he, I'm not going to say who it is, but. If he didn't know, then he is, I can't respect him for what he is. I mean, he is. He, no, there's no way he didn't know. Listen, there is a there is in season two of Clone Wars, they have the yeah. homeboy talk. So I, I they both know what's what's popping. It, let, they let, know. Let's not but they don't they don't know that he's married to her though. They don't know that. I, you know, I'm gonna be that, honest, man. I, I honestly believe that he knew. I think that. A lot of times Obi Wan might have covered for Anakin because a lot of times they'd be like, "Where's your, where's your, uh, where's your apprentice?" And he was like, "Oh, he's not answering," or whatever the case may be. Because I mean, you think about it, right? When we get to Revenge of the Sith in Episode Three, when Obi Wan comes up to Padme, he just is like, "It's Anakin's right." Like, like looking at her, like, "Come on, bro, you already know." Like, come on, y'all, y'all ain't fooling nobody. 
you see it in episode two when he he hasn't seen her in how many ever years, and the second he sees her, I mean, he's got puppy dog eyes. I mean, Obi Wan is not stupid. Okay, it's, it's worth that, bro. In, it's a, in episode two at the end, I have a when, theory that they the, all were sleeping happy. around if they just didn't say anything because it's just kind of the Jedi code to not <laughs> say is, anything. But they all it, did. Yes, there are the several. Bro code. There are several times throughout the books where they mention like you don't have sure. a bunch of guys like you don't have a bunch of guys running around the galaxy and that are all celibate. No, we're about to find. As we're about to find out, how do you think Yoda we call these force sensitive babies? Oh, well, I mean, I well, just yeah, it's going to happen, and I think they knew it was going to happen. They just try and avoid attachments for these types of reasons, um, you know, because it led to the downfall of the order. But I think. It's always happened throughout the entire history of the order. Um, it only did because that's yeah. when George Lucas wrote it. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, Shane kind of touched upon it, but that was one of the, the the excuses one of the Jedi used. He was like, "Look, man, uh, I'm just supposed I'm not supposed to fall in love." He didn't say I couldn't uh, have a have a uh, companion. <laughs> Yeah, he, he didn't say I couldn't balance the force. He just he just said that I was. What? <laughs> All you got to do is not get attached, guys, and then you're not breaking the code. Okay, yeah. they just, just don't, don't get want, attached. They don't want strong feelings. <laughs> I'm just throw they were all sleeping around. That's why we have baby Yoda now. Yoda did it. I, I hope. I hope. I hope Yoda did it with somebody. Like <laughs> baby Yoda is a little lighter skin than I thought. <laughs> it ain't a sh darker shade of green. I find out that Yoda slept with Yaddle. I mean, they need to write him out. <laughs> okay. Because Yaddle's oh, the worst thing I've ever seen in Star Wars. We just, we just <laughs> officially got an E rating on our podcast. <laughs> yeah, if you, we did. If you don't know what who Yaddle is, Google it. It's the worst thing you've ever seen, okay? Yeah, the picture does <laughs> not uh, do her any favors for Yoda, sure. Yoda did not sleep with any one of his species if that was what they looked like. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, Austin said that he's going to put balance of force on a hat. If you do, you got to give full credit to a mod. That's always been a mod. <laughs> That's always been a mod. <laughs> so, uh, Shane, you just mentioned <laughs> Apple and, oh, and okay. Disney. I, I think we should talk about that because that was something that's been that came up last week, actually. That Apple has enough money that if they wanted to buy out Disney right now because of all what's going on, and their stocks are plummeting. They could actually buy Disney out. You said, so, what do you guys? Oh, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so Disney stock is plummeting, but the way it works is the shareholders <clears throat> have to agree on a price. And the price that they assume that they would, that the shareholders would set is 50, 50% above the premium. So you're looking at about $140 a share, which winds up being $400 billion. Apple only has $254 billion in cash um, in their reserves. I say only, I mean, come on guys, $254 billion. But um, they only have $254 billion in cash reserves. So they would have to include um, stock incentives and take on debt. Um, so it's very unlikely to happen. Um, I don't think it's a good move. Um, I do not think Apple would do would be good for Disney or Star Wars or Marvel or anything like that. Um, but most people expect the stock to rebound as soon as you know the um, the beer virus kind of gets going or gets over with. Um, so it'll recover fast. Uh, so I don't think it's a legitimate thing. Um, but no, Apple doesn't technically have the money because um, it will be expensive. Um, but I, the shareholders don't really seem eager to sell. And I don't think that Apple, I don't think it makes financial sense for them to spend that much money. Um, Apple or Disney makes a lot of money, but Disney also has a lot of debt and they also have a lot of cost. And I don't think that Apple has any interest in absorbing that. Well, so, Apple yeah. has to do something though, because, you know, especially with the T-Mobile Sprint merger, they're going to have to think of something. So that would be something huge for them. And it would uh, basically shoot their... Um, their streaming service, their trajectory would be a whole lot bigger. The streaming service end of it would be huge, but I mean, what is it? I think right now, 55% of Apple's um, profits come from their iPhone sales. If they bought Disney, that would lower that percentage of their profits down to 45%, I believe. So it's not, I don't know that it's worth the risk um, for the amount of debt and stuff that they would have to take on to take over Apple. And that's assuming the stock doesn't recover any, because if the stock recovers any, then they're going to have to pay more than $140 a share. 
And you're already looking at four hundred billion dollars. Yeah, and at the most, they're going to be, uh, you know, to be uh, whatever a member of the board, fifty one percent for them to make decisions. And that's only that's what you said. Their cash reserves are at what is it, two hundred fifty billion or whatever it is. Um, yep. So they're going to use all that just so they can just be a uh, a deciding member of the board. I don't think I don't see that. And I don't see the shareholders agreeing to a buyout. Sorry, Joey. No, no, no. You're everything you're saying is right. I mean, I I don't buy any stock into this. <laughs> I just think that there's so much more Apple can do with their money than. I mean, look, it's a cool thing. It would be a, it would be awesome for them to buy Disney like that. I mean, that's the cool thing. But there's so much more. I just think from a money standpoint, it doesn't make sense at all. They do premium hardware. They don't do premium content. So yeah. um, I, mean, I, I don't I don't buy it. I mean, again, I am fine with being wrong, but I, I really think it's just I think it's just people talking. Yeah. Hey, if, they, Gary, if they want oh. entertainment, go get Netflix. Yeah. I mean, hey. you got the money. Go buy Netflix. Sorry. I'm we done. got we got five minutes. Jared, what do you want to go into? Well, well, we got one more that we could probably talk about since. We have Austin that's so excited about Obi Wan being double sided. Uh, we'll just we'll just go in with uh, Joby Harold named the new writer for the Obi Wan series. Now, is it Joby is it still a series though, or or yes, are they yes. pushing it to the movie? It's still still considered a series, and this is going to be the first time writing for him for a television series. Um, he's done Transformers. Uh, he's doing the sequel to Bumblebee. And then also he was a pro executive producer of John Wick. Um, so what do you guys think about him? This is his first television series. Uh, I'm pretty sure he did a TV series. I thought he wrote. I, whenever I, I, I looked it up, this is the very first one he's a writer for. So, this is this goes back to my point from ep, uh from episode one for us. I believe that Kathleen Kennedy knows what she's doing. <clears throat> I know immediately because of the fact when you hear there's turmoil with the series that the people are thinking, Oh, I've heard a lot of people like, Oh, I'm jumping ship, like I'm not even excited anymore. Da, 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 da. Like yeah. Kathleen Kennedy knows what she's doing, regardless of how people agree with some of the decisions she makes or not. And so it's one of those things like until we see the product, we won't know the impact of whether he's writing it. Because I, like I said, I need to know what was so detrimental from the first writing yep. as to why they wanted to go with a different writer. It, it obviously had to be something because what they saw with the Mandalorian, they can go a little more inside baseball than what they thought. And so with the success, success of that show, why would you want to, uh, then water down the product like you you, you have you, you're reactionary obviously because you see that this is working so why would you try to change it that's my opinion about it he did do tv series he's doing there's a new one coming What's out done? now and then he's also done underground no but he was an executive producer on underground he wasn't yeah, a writer on producer okay you're talking about just writing yeah, yeah. I'm not stressed about it. I mean, the way I look at it is, I mean, he's going to write the scripts or rewrite the scripts and then they're going to read them. If they don't think it's good, we're going to pick another one. Like they're going to they're going to wait and do this right. And that's what I love. Like don't rush Obi-Wan. I and mean, this is this is a flagship series for your Disney Plus streaming service. You've already invested over a billion dollars in Disney Plus. Don't don't have a miss. Like take your time, get the writers and 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 fire until it hits. Like that's that's my thing. Just just write it until it's right. Um, and that's it, the thing. You don't have to rush because of the fact, like you said, that right now the flagship show is is the Mandalorian. So you already have Cassian and or uh, coming down and then the other Marvel series that are going to drop. So you don't have to rush it. The, the, the only reason why I think there's probably a little bit of heat on this is because of the fact we've been talking about Obi-Wan way back before the solo project was was talked about. So this was originally supposed to be a movie. And, you know, people beloved, uh, you know, really love uh, Ewan McGregor. So it's one of those things like, man, we just need to strike while the iron is hot. We need something positive for Star Wars. Yeah. I don't. And I don't know if I really necessarily have an opinion one way or the other. I just, it is interesting to me that when we first started hearing about Obi-Wan, they were talking about getting more of a deep like side of Obi-Wan, like more of a story based. 
And by this guy that they're picking, I'm just looking at what he's done. And it's just like, he looks like he's really good at action. And so, I mean, I look at, I'm executive producer of, you know, what is that? Uh, which I love edge of tomorrow. Edge love of tomorrow. That. Yeah. Love that one. But you know, you got John wick, you got Robin hood, you got King Arthur. You got, I mean, he's involved with these, these things that had a lot of action and, and stuff. So again, I, I don't really know what that means, but um, again, before at the very beginning, the reports were that we're going to see an Obi-Wan, we're going to have more of a story to him and not so much action. And now I don't know what this means, but, We'll see. Time will tell. Guys, John Wick with the lightsaber. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> is that a bad thing? No. <laughs> hey, did y'all real quick? Did y'all see that uh, Witcher uh, with the lightsabers? Added. I've not it? seen it. Yes, I haven't awesome. seen it. Yes, I need to watch oh, it. Y'all gotta look that. If you guys up. haven't watched the Witcher, not not with lightsabers, but in general. I mean, come on, guys. It's the it's the Witcher. It's yeah. <laughs> I haven't played the Witcher. Oh yeah, Witcher. that's a whole other podcast for me. Yeah, <laughs> that would be uh, not so G-rated, I think, if we're talking about The Witcher, though. <laughs> true. Don't play it around your children. No, yeah, true. A lot yeah, of, for sure. A lot of force balancing in that episode. <laughs> <laughs> if you, <laughs> Lot, lots of lightsabers. If you yeah. use this that edits it before you watch it, you're going to miss about 60% of some episodes. So, good luck. <laughs> given, given the birth of bees talk, and it might be a good game. <laughs> Okay, guys, oh. we are hitting up an hour. I think we should just cut it here. Sounds I appreciate good. you guys. Uh, everybody that's watching with us, I mean, I hope you're liking this. We are definitely having fun just hanging out, talking with you, talking with each other, and uh, just be safe. We love yep. you guys. And don't miss the next one. We're definitely going to keep doing this every We're week. Talk more about a soak. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about a soak every time. <laughs> That's right. As long as we're all right. Awesome. May hey the guys. force be with you. May the force be with you. Later, guys. This is the way. <laughs>